Warm greetings from the high 10. It is Everyday Shenanigans on this Monday, June 1st, 2020. I'd like to bring you said information by NBC News if you need verification for the storyline. And this isn't pertaining to Mr. Donald Trump. Trump calls governors facing unrest, weak and fools, urges stronger police tactics. President Donald Trump on Monday lashed out at governors during a White House video conference telling them that most of you are weak after states grapple with another night of anger and unrest following the killing of George Floyd in the custody of Minneapolis police. According to a source on the call, Trump was annoyed with the governors for the response to the protests and urged law enforcement to crack down and make more arrests. You've got to arrest people. You have to track people. You have to put them in jail for 10 years and you'll never see this stuff again, Trump said, according to the source. Trump was described by one person on the call as losing it and another saying the president called the governor's fools and expressed anger with Democratic mayors over the protests and unrest ravaging cities nationwide. Trump said on the call that other countries watching the situation unfold think Americans are pushovers. You have to dominate. You, If you don't dominate, you're wasting your time, the president said, according to a person listening. Excuse me. The president also called the start of the Minnesota response weak and pathetic and said that protesters have likely spread out to other cities after leaving Minneapolis. The person said Trump seemed obsessed with Antifa and Occupy Wall Street, which he said was handled well by comparison and just went away one day. You've got to arrest people. You have to track people. You have to put them in jail for 10 years, and you'll never see this stuff again, Trump said on the call, according to the person. The White House billed the event as a video teleconference with governors, law enforcement, and national security officials on keeping America communities safe. Trump's solution to the unrest has been to call for stronger law enforcement rather than calling for calm and addressing the concerns about police brutality and racism that many protesters say drove them to come out. Amen. Critics say an escalation in force will exacerbate already high tensions between protesters and the police. Another, After another night of protests led to fires and vandalism blocks from the White House, Trump spent Monday morning on Twitter blaming the unrest on Antifa and accusing staffers of former Vice President Joe Biden of working to get the anarchists out of jail. Trump had no public event scheduled for Monday, nor did he appear publicly on Sunday. Trump's advisors have been divided over what role the president should take in responding to the widest unrest the country has seen in decades. Some say the president should focus his message on George Floyd, the black man who died last week at the hands of Minneapolis police, and urge calm. Others say the top priority is stopping the violence and looting that have taken place in some areas, arguing that the best path to that is in the strong police is the best path to that in is strong police tactics, not presidential speeches. And that information is brought to you by the NBC News. Well, of course, as I just stated in my previous video, the only people who would be concerned with him not giving any speeches in protest of police violence and the death of George Floyd and sending a message of hope, condolences to the family and the community are people who are like Mr. Donald Trump, people who are racist Americans, and that's the spoken word. You see, a decent human, which Mr. Trump is not, would have sent out condolences to the family, would be trying to tell the American people, hey, I get it. I feel your pain. I see where you're coming from. And I'm going to do what I can to stop this violence from police departments around the country. Stop the violence on African-American people and people in general. But no, you don't get that. All you get is criticism of governors, how they should be arresting people and tracking them and putting them in jail for 10 years. People go to jail every day and they still commit crimes. What's your point? People commit crimes for murder, theft, robbery, and they still get out of jail, prison, and go back to stealing, robbing, using drugs, selling drugs, because you see... People do what they want to do. Mr. Trump is oblivious to all things pertaining to empathy. As one lady has said, a well-known reporter, he has no empathy. So he cannot relate to anything that comes from being empathetic. He is not going to say anything about George Floyd in a positive light to give people hope to give his family hope because he doesn't give a damn. He does not care. And for those of you who follow in behind Mr. Trump, you are avid supporters. You are avid 
Republicans, that is your business, that is your choice, but I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this, and I don't care who likes it, because, because this is my channel. I do not view all people the same, but I cannot begin to understand any human that would follow in behind Donald Trump. You can be a Republican all you want. I can give you a pass on that. It's your damn choice. But I cannot understand any human rallying behind Donald Trump, rallying behind his sick and idiotic and ignorant ideologies. Because you see, when you say you are a supporter, you are a fan, you're basically saying you agree with what he does. You agree how he thinks. You agree with his tongue, his speech, the rhetoric he spews out on a daily basis. This man has criticized governors, officials, mayors with the pandemic of Corona. Now that there is unrest because of George Floyd's death, now he has nothing better to do but to go to Twitter, the same people he just criticized for biasness, and spew more venom about what the governors are not doing and they're weak and they're this and they're that. And they're fools. Well, you were just talking bad about them pertaining to Corona. Saying that they should be the ones handling the Corona problems and administering supplies and tests because you didn't want to be bothered. You didn't want your hands dirty. That is the president that some of you follow. Some of you rally behind. And I have a problem with that. I don't dwell on Mr. Trump. I don't dwell on people being Republicans. I don't dwell on foolishness. Because you see, you're not my God. And I don't follow man. And I never have. I've never been a follower. I don't jump when everybody else jump. And I don't believe everything that comes out of a person's mouth. And I don't do what other people do. And that's why I'm still alive at 49 years of age. Mr. Trump is a coward, and in my opinion, he is weak and a fool, because only a fool would get up and spew venom and rhetoric every damn day via social media, via press conferences, being rude to reporters, nasty to them, calling them fake news, cutting them off when they're speaking, talking bad about his own staff, people he has hired, other politicians who are also Republicans, the man is vile, and it should not shock anyone that he is using George Floyd's death as well as a way to spew more venom and hate. And there was a time when he was running for office. People would say, this man is crooked. He's inciting racism. And at first, I would not agree because I always felt like people are entitled to think and do for themselves. That they don't need someone to lead them to the water. That if they want to be a fool, if they want to be a racist, they will do so on his or her own. And now as time has passed, we're into the fourth year of this fool's presidency. I will agree with some of you now. I believe he is a racist. I believe he is a fool, a dumbass. He is disrespectful and he is vile. And he has incited much racism in this country by white people, white supremacy, because he is of the same caliber as those people who rally behind him. I never saw so much discord in this country until Donald Trump ran for office, voted into office. And I watched how violent the people were at his rallies when he was running for office, how rude and nasty they were to protesters pushing and shoving them. And I said to myself, these are the same people who cry about being civilized and want to have the right to carry a gun. But you are no different than the people you criticize. The street people, the black people, them, they, those. You are no different. You hide behind, as I said, phones and computers. You hide behind rallies, Republican rallies, pretending that you are better than other people, but you are not. You are the same vile, vicious animals 
such as the president and such as the people you deem criminals, crooks that are running the streets and looting and vandalizing the streets at this moment. You are no different. And that is my opinion. Let me say this to some of you who are dumb as a bag of rocks. You cannot follow the devil and in the same breath say, I don't believe in the devil. You get my point. So you rally behind a fool, then you believe in that fool. Because you, there's no halfway in. There's no straddling the fence. You're either in or you are out. So you follow him, Mr. Trump, because you believe in Mr. Trump. And that's the spoken word. He needs to be quiet. He is a demon seed to me. And man can redeem himself if he chooses to. But Mr. Trump is a 70-year-old fool who refuses to be quiet, refuses to stay off of social media, uses the same social media to banter back and forth with the public, reporters, anybody with a pulse, because he is an insecure tiny little person, tiny little bully who has no life. And I feel sorry for those of you who follow in behind this man because to me, you are of the same weight. You are of the same caliber. And that is my opinion. That is my opinion. Because for you to follow in behind Mr. Trump and be a supporter, that means you act like him and you think like him. And you cannot jump on here and say that you are any different than him, Republican or not. Because there's no way in hell you're going to make me believe that you are any different than him and you are his supporter. You are of the same weight. And that is my opinion. Because there's no way in hell after all these years of seeing this man's behavior that you can say you are still a supporter of Mr. Trump. He is a vile creature. He is a demon seed. He is a spawn of the devil. And Twitter can dismantle his account. He is no great force that he proclaims that he is. Do us a favor, Twitter. Knock that account on out. He ain't nobody. He ain't nobody special. George Floyd died a week ago today by the hands of Minneapolis police officer Mr. Chauvin, with no respect, no regard for his life. And now we have a president, once again, who cannot keep his mouth closed and rallying and criticizing governors that they are weak, that they are fools, and need to arrest more people. Instead of expressing hope in the people, the African-American people, in hope that we'll have a better police department and they will get better training in how to treat and arrest people. But instead, all we get is vile language from the United States president. That is Mr. Donald Trump. He has no weight in my opinion. And the only person who can think of him as value is God. And that's God's job, not mine. You see, I'm a human and I'm of the flesh, so I can't judge. Because I'm nothing more, nothing less, but a human. And only God can work with Mr. Trump. And the sick people who act like him and think like him. He incites rage and hate. And I've seen it now. And I concur. He is a major problem. And that's the spoken word. Corona is still on the horizon. Prayers for those who are sick and ill, those who have passed away. And now they're saying that they believe the, vi the virus will escalate because of the riots and the, um, and the protesting and the people gathering because of the death of George Floyd. I would not doubt that. Maybe God is trying to tell us something. Maybe God is telling us to... He is tired. And he says, I will deal with you as I see fit. 
the reckoning has come home. Because you all refuse to listen. Refuse to adhere to the word, my word. So I will handle you accordingly. This is Everyday Shenanigans. God bless you. Bye-bye.